Now we've talked qualitatively about increases and decreases in equilibrium price and quantity. But one thing that's interesting to think about is when we have one of these shifts, is more of the effect going to be seen in changes in quantity or is more of the effect going to be seen in changes in price? So again, just drawing our very simple supply and demand diagram can shed a lot of light on this issue. For example, on the left here, you see two diagrams. In each of the diagrams, you see the same demand curve and the same change in demand. The only difference is in the first one, you have very elastic supply. And in the second one, you have very inelastic supply. And what you'll notice in the first case, when we have elastic supply, because really what we're saying here, when we're moving from one equilibrium to another, we're moving along the same supply curve. And because that supply curve is elastic, we're seeing a relatively large change in quantity compared to the change in price. On the other hand, when we have that same change in demand, and we have inelastic supply, we have a relatively small change in quantity as compared to the change in price. So in our elastic case, we have small changes in price and large changes in quantity. In our inelastic case, we have the opposite. We have larger changes in price and smaller changes in quantity. We can see the same thing thinking about changes in supply rather than thinking about changes in demand. Again, over here, I've drawn the same supply curve in both cases, the same change in supply in both cases, but in the first case here, I've drawn relatively elastic demand. And in the second case, I've drawn relatively inelastic demand. And again, because when we're moving from one equilibrium to another, we're doing so along our demand curve, when we have a flatter demand curve or a more elastic demand curve, we're going to see a larger change in quantity as compared to change in price. And when we have a more inelastic demand curve, we're going to see a larger change in price as compared to the change in quantity. So it doesn't really matter whether we're talking about changes in demand or changes in supply. When we have a more inelastic curve for the other one, meaning when we're talking about changes in supply, we're talking about elastic or inelastic demand, we're going to see larger changes in price. And when we have more elastic supply or demand, we're going to see larger changes in quantity. This becomes relevant because when we're talking about the effects on the market, people tend to think differently about changes in price than they do about changes in quantity, so it's really a trade-off in thinking about how does one move compared to the other above and beyond just knowing whether they go up or down in qualitative terms. Now sometimes we could have a situation that's more complicated than the basic examples we just went through and we could actually have both a shift in supply and a shift in demand. And that's not generally a problem, we just want to think about how those two effects can come together. So, Luckily, what we can do is we can say, well, when we have, for example, a decrease in supply and an increase in demand, as we sometimes see with, for example, the market for oil or gasoline, we have both supply reductions and because of countries industrializing and demanding more oil, we get that coupled with an increase in demand. So what happens to equilibrium price and quantity in that case? Well, we can see here that we can actually just move both of the curves and again in the comparative statics framework just compare the old equilibrium to the new equilibrium. So in this setup for example we have our old equilibrium here and then we have our new equilibrium at the intersection of the new supply curve and the new demand curve. You'll notice here that we could think about this as the summation of two individual effects. Effect one being the effect of the decrease in supply, and effect two being the effect of the increase in demand. And we're just adding together those two effects to get the overall effect. So qualitatively, we can think of that as follows. 
Well, when we have a decrease in supply, we get an increase in equilibrium price and a decrease in equilibrium quantity. When we have an increase in demand, we get an increase in equilibrium price and an increase in equilibrium quantity. Well, the price part's easy, because when we add together an increase and an increase, we unambiguously get another increase. However, when we add these two effects together, we don't know which one of them, without further information, is actually bigger. So we're adding together a decrease and an increase. We don't know how those compare. So in terms of the effect on equilibrium quantity, it's ambiguous. And that's what we've represented graphically with these two diagrams. In the first case, we have a small decrease in supply coupled with a large increase in demand. In this case, we see that, as expected, we have an increase in the equilibrium price. We also have an increase in equilibrium quantity. And the reason that that is, is because this effect here is bigger than this effect here, because our change in demand is larger than our change in supply. It also has to do with the relative elasticities like we talked about earlier. Again, you don't have to memorize these things, but drawing the, the graphs will help you understand what we know and what we don't know, and what the relative changes in price and quantity are in each of these situations. On the other hand, let's think about what happens when we have a large decrease in supply and a small increase in demand. Well, in this case, we end up seeing we still get that increase in price, because we said that we always would. But now we see a decrease in the equilibrium quantity, because we're going from an original equilibrium here to a new equilibrium here. So in this case, you see the opposite. So we have two cases, one where we have an increase in equilibrium quantity, and one where we have a decrease. Which is why we say that when we have this setup, we actually don't know which effect is going to dominate, and we need more information in order to figure that out. As a last point, I'd just like to remind you that just as we talked about before when analyzing supply and demand, we wanted to say, well, how quickly do markets move to equilibrium? And I said, well, it depends on the scenario. It depends how quickly prices can change, how quickly firms and consumers get new information, etc. Well, the same is true when we're discussing changes in equilibrium. This is to say that it's not necessarily the case that when we're comparing the new equilibrium to the old equilibrium, that the new equilibrium is going to come about instantaneously. Again, it depends on how quickly firms and consumers can update their prices and update the information that they have used in their decision-making processes. It's also the case that because you have this transition from one equilibrium to another, it's not necessarily the case that everything that you see in nature is going to be an equilibrium or steady state situation. That there could be temporary outcomes where there are shortages or surpluses, those just aren't going to persist indefinitely because the market forces are at work.